Good day, fellow investors. Stock analysis day today. We're going to analyze Chenier Energy, NYSA, LNG, long owned by one of the best value investors out there, Seth Klarman. Albeit he owned it 2014 till 2018. So we are now down from the highs of a year ago, two years ago. So it's good to see whether Chenier Energy offers some value investment returns. I will be looking at all natural gas and LNG stocks, the complete sector, because as I'm bullish on uh, the middle class expanding, as I'm bullish on Asia Pacific, and I'm looking for low risk, high reward exposure there, one of the ways to get exposure to what's going on on there in Asia and over the last year we see how they are doing better than we in Europe and in the US then it's good to look for exposure there and I'll do something similar for natural gas stocks as I did for copper in October November is my natural gas LNG sector or in October I have analyzed the whole copper sector and here I did a dozen of copper stocks that resulted later in a what is this 40 page copper investment thesis risk reward when to buy so this is what i'll do also for natural gas and in this video i wanted to share my initial research and analysis on chenier that will also give good indications about where the natural gas shale market in the united states is the risks and reward, what's priced in, what's not priced in, and will all lead to an investment conclusion where you'll see whether this is something for you or not. Now let's start with Chenier, the stock, the ownership, the structure, and then we'll go through the business overview, fundamentals, the valuation, and the investment conclusion. Actually, it is a stock that offers high possible investment returns depending on how they deal with the debt and what is the situation beyond the contracted values. So, of course, the key factors are contracted businesses, predictable cash flows, when those end, then is the key for valuations. However, also free cash flows will be finally kicking in by 2021 used to lower debt and likely increase the dividend in the mid to late 2020s. When that happens, the company might be revalued by the market and then you have yourself a great return. Of course, risk, competition, natural gas prices on the Henry Hub, if those go higher, US LNG is less competitive, trade issues with China and of course the US oil and natural shale outlook. If we look at the stock price over the long term, it has been very volatile, but keep in mind, up to 2010, Chenier was an importer of natural gas. Then as the shale oil started, they went, they made a bet on that booming and they made a good bet. Nobody believed them in 2009 to 2011, 12. But then as shale, natural gas and everything started working, the bet worked. They made a great return up to 2014, then 2016 commodities crash, we were down again, up again, COVID, and now we are somewhere in the middle from a long-term historical perspective. When it comes to the ownership structure, there are two main businesses for Chenier, that's the liquefaction facilities on Sabine Pass and Corpus Christi. Sabine Pass is 50% owned by Chenier, and 50% owned by Blackstone. True, the another li listed entity, Chenier Equity Partners, that's listed with the ticker CQP, and it pays a dividend already because Chenier, the mother company, needs the dividends from the partners to pay for the debt and finance Corp Corpus Christi, which is owned 100% as the company is still growing. What does the company do? Of course, I already said, it's a natural gas liquefier from the US to facilities, Sabine Pass, Corpus Christi, and all of those have more growth coming, train six under construction, Sabine Pass, train free commissioning at Corpus Christi, that should breed, bring long-term growth to 60 MTPA. 
So that should really improve also cash flows, especially when the investments subdue. Long-term contracts are the foundation of the business. So 85% of future production is contracted, which gives safety for the company as they are just a tall operator. They, they buy the natural gas at Henry Hub prices and then they liquefy that and sell around the world to other customers. The long-term LNG market fundamentals look intact. As we have seen on the earlier chart, their high growth expected, supply gap expected, expected over the coming decade, which means that it's likely that Chenier will have a stable business also in 5-10 years down the road, which is a positive. There is competition from Russia, from Shell, but that competition might not impact the next 18 years that are contracted for Chenier, but further it might impact depending on how big is that demand. Because if you look at the cost curve of producing and shipping LNG across the world, US producers are really on the high end, end on that cost curve. So when you're on high end, any changes in demand that are different than expected might be very detrimental for you. Others have lower costs of producing, shipping, bringing that to Asia. So if there are issues or that these guys see that it pays them to increase production, to increase competition, and squeeze these Americans out, then it might be issues over the long term. But for now, we haven't seen such issues. The problem is not that much perhaps this cost as everything is contracted. The problem is Chenier's debt. If we look at Chenier's balance sheet, long term net debt is 30.8 billion. That is a lot. And Total assets are 45.8 billion, equity is just 422 million, that's debt to equity of about 80 or something. That's a huge number as the growth, all those trains have been financed through debt. And that is why you see that volatility on Chenier's stock price. Because when there are issues, people start panicking that the debt will be difficultly refinanced or that the interest rates are going up. Chenier has an average 5.5% interest rate payment on 31 billion. That's one point something billion per year that goes into refinancing. And then the stock really crashes when debt concerns increase, which is very, very interesting, especially given the contract that business model but okay as i said for the debt and looked at all the debt numbers around 5.5 percent some higher some lower but okay this is what it is i would say very risky but if everything is contracted and they can find the money to finance and refinance when needed and finance the growth then there is not much to worry about so interest expenses are 400 million per quarter, 1.6, 1.7 billion per year, which really pressures free cash flows. And Chenier Energy hasn't seen free cash flows for the last decade because it still does a lot of investing. And we see net cash used in investing activities of 1.1 billion over the last quarter. That's still 4 billion per year. But that is expected to subdue over the next year, two years, which should lead into high cash flows, high positive cash flows that will be used to lower the debt and increase dividends. And as we all know, when dividends go up, so does the stock price, because that's how the market works. Now, when it comes to valuation, I haven't separated Chenier Energy and Chenier Equity energy partners, I have used both of their valuations, both of them market capitalization. So 12 for Chenier Energy and 17 billion for Chenier Energy partners. So I have here looked at that, what does the company as a whole make? And then I have gone into a valuation as 
a console, on a consolidated basis. As, uh, as I say, this is an introductory research that I do for most companies that I look at, but given the work that is done, I decided to share because a lot of you have interest in US natural gas plays. If I estimate cash flows, free cash flows, all in, and uh, those cash flows that are used to lower the debt as those cash flows arise. So as the debt goes down, I have also lowered the debt cost per year, which slowly increases the cash flows after the debt has been paid. In 10 years, if they decide, okay, we're going to pay down all the debt, this company could be debt-free by 2030, which should leave 4.3 billion in cash flows as free cash flows to be paid out as dividends from 2030 onward. So this is one way of analyzing or the second way, the second model that I created is that they pay down the debt up to 2027 to 14 billion, which should then give a debt to cash flows of about four, bring it to investment grade rating and ease all the concerns about the debt Still, 2027, the free cash flow should, should be at 3.8 billion. Assuming all else remains equal, we should see a valuation of 70 billion by 2027. In this case, 4 billion. Assuming a 5% required yield, if the LNG market outlook remains good, then you can price this as a bond, 5% dividend, then the market valuation would be 70 billion. If it goes to 70 billion for the whole company from the current 30 billion combining the partners and Chenier, the corporation, that would give you a 14%, 14.5% yearly return. And that is what the management's target is. So 14% is a really, really big return. If they repay all the debt, but they will never do that because it's not smart from a corporate perspective, then the return would be 12.7% up to 2030 based on the 4.3% cash flows and 100 billion market capitalization. Again, pricing this as a bond with a 4.4% long-term yield. The investment conclusion, well, it all depends on this, the cost curve long term, will it after 2030 still be like a bond with contracted long term businesses or will US shale be in a pickle or not? Will there be enough gas to supply? Will the cost competition be there or not? So those are all things that we have to look over the years. It's a little bit risky also given the 31 billion in debt, but this is what it is. And then on the outlook for the stock price, I have given it a 75% chance that it works out as planned and 25% chance that it doesn't work out as planned. And here you can see where the stock price will go. And this is something you can use to compare to other investment opportunities you have out there. Chenier looks like a good bet on long-term US LNG prices questions, any ideas, any comments, any value adding comments on the sector? How do you see that performing? Please let me know in the comments below. I always love reading your comments. A lot of work ahead of me. I'll make a few more of these videos and let me know what kind of videos, what kind of stocks would you like to hear about because I can't make 30 videos about natural gas stocks like I didn't make 30 videos about copper stocks. But what stocks would you be more interested in? Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.